Hello and welcome to this Google Hangout on Air, the NMC Horizon Report 2013 K-12 edition. Consider, connect, collaborate. The NMC Horizon Report 2013 K-12 edition is a product of the New Media Consortium's Horizon Project, an ongoing research effort that examines emerging technologies for their potential impact on and use in teaching, learning, and creative inquiry within education around the globe. The report is a collaboration of the New Media Consortium, the Consortium for School Networking, and the International Society for Technology and Education, and is generously funded by HP. Um, let's turn another technology presented in the Horizon Report to become mainstream K-12 practice in the next um, 12 months or so, is mobile learning. Um, Vicki, you offered to share what you described to me as your district's realistic and successful approach uh, to mobile learning. So uh, tell us about your experiences there in La Crosse. I sure will, Vicki. Uh, let me bring up um, a slideshow that I have for you. Thank you very much, Vicki. Um, in the school district of La Crosse, uh, we have um, um, a, a um, digital learning um, program that we began a while ago. It's our one-to-one -one program. Our district is located on the Great Mississippi River in Wisconsin. Um, we have about 7,000 students that we uh, serve with uh, a number of school district employees as well as um, school buildings. Um, we have a kind of a challenging economic situation in La Crosse where we're landlocked and so our economic development is always a, a very important um, part of our conversation as we look to educating our students. We do have a very strong commitment to our uh, to excellence in learning in our schools, and um, so we end up with a number of choice and charters um, that are supported by the public schools. But um, all of that together kind of has led us to uh, where we are today um, through continual conversation about what our learning environment needs. It really became evident that our shared um, community device model of uh, labs and carts and um, a few machines and classrooms really wasn't meeting the um, instructional needs and learning needs of our teachers and our students. And so they really um, collectively began to say to us, we need to do something different, we need to do something different. So um, we really kind of have a, a philosophy here in La Crosse, um, given the economic challenges that we face, that we believe we need to provide um, tools and resources and materials for all of our students, just as we've done for years in providing them with um, textbooks and materials. Um, we went through the process of um, bringing uh, your own device in a number of our, our schools um, as a precursor to us going uh, and supporting a total one-to-one -one program in grades uh, six, eight uh, this fall. Um, but what we found was that um, the equity of um, access and the equity of resources to our students um, wasn't there. We wanted to have more of an equitable environment for them. So um, we uh, moved to, uh, um, over the last number of years, we've been working on um, transforming our classrooms, working um, with the framework from Ruben. Um, and our teachers um, can probably uh, describe this model much better than, than uh, many of us can because they really infused it into their work with the Common Core. Um, they see the commonality and, and this as a, a real framework to use as they um, work with 21st century skills as well as our library folks work with um, ALA um, standards and move that along. Um, they have um, found themselves um, making change based on this model um, in a more practical way than um, other things that we've used in the past with um, technology and, and uh, with the training that we've provided them. So why did we do mobile learning in lacrosse? Well, as we move through those stages, as I talked about before, um, we really began with the learning that we wanted our students to experience. And what we determined is that we wanted a learning environment that was project-based, it was highly content rich and available, and that it was differentiated and it moved us from that substitution to that transformation in learning experiences. Um, the device we selected for our middle school one-to-one -one was iPads, i.e. the iTunes U um, environment that we have created here. And um, the reason we chose that is because we um, really looked for a device that met those learning needs, but that met the needs of all of our content areas and moved us forward in that one-to-one 
um, uh, beyond um, where, where our teachers thought that we were mostly at this point was in that substitution arena. So our middle school students um, today um, will tell you after we piloted it last spring uh, with uh, an entire seventh grade in one of our middle schools um, and it worked very well so we moved fully into our 6-8 implementation. Our students will tell you that they're, they're really engaged in their learning a whole lot more because they have these devices in their hands. They'll tell you that they're a little angry because their teachers are expecting more of them. Um, they're um, finding that they have available to them more in-depth content. Um, as the teachers create their iTunes U courses for distribution of content, uh, teachers are able to differentiate and create tasks and um, things that are there for them and do it more quickly and easily. Their parents have access to the, the uh, um, resources as well, those that we make available on our public site, but we have many, many, many courses that our teachers are doing that are um, uh, still private. Uh, because of a, for a number of reasons they've chosen to not make them available on the public side. Um, but the, the, the te students will also tell you that not only getting their content through this way, um, being able to use QR codes to access uh, videos in their flipped classroom environment, uh, as well as utilizing our Moodle and our Edmodo environment, um, they have a set of tools available to them on the iPads that let them work 24-7. Um, they, they utilize the, the productivity tools, they utilize the collaboration tools. Um, we did move into a, a Google Gmail environment this fall, first time that Lacrosse ever gave uh, email accounts to their students. We always allowed students to use their own. And so all of that collectively has, has made for a real collaborative environment that uh, we didn't have before we had devices in the hands of kids. Um, but because these devices let the kids have availability to all of those tools and they can download that content before they go home. Um, they don't need access 24-7 and they don't in terms of being tethered to the internet and so our families with that don't have that access and can't get to a place that have that access, um, those students are finding just as much success as others um, in, in what they do. Um, where were the hurdles? And I, I think that anytime you know people across this nation and, and in other countries move to a one to one, they really find um, that every environment has its own hurdles. And in our school district, um, we had um, leadership and we had the early adopters who really wanted us to move quickly. And we found that um, although we had pilots and we had things moving into the one to one arena, um, slowly, um, just having those early adopters wanting this technology doesn't really impact what happens in the classroom in terms of that culture of learning as well as what teachers need to and administrators need to be thinking about to be ready for a one-to-one. -one. So about a year ago uh, we really spent the time uh, more directly um, focusing on the planning for the one-to-one -one, but previous to that we spent um, a lot of time and we still do no matter where we are um, folks talk about um, working with technology um, how it enhances learning um, and collectively we have a vision that within a number of years here we think um, hopefully by next year we will have one to one 312 um, with learning centers in our K2 environment so um, I think patience really was um, kind of the, the biggest hurdle uh, in, in terms of uh, it's really not a hurdle but in terms of utilizing patients um, so that we could make this successful and that's really what we were able to do. Um, in, Diane talked a little bit about um, the three things to help people move forward and if, if there were three things we could say from lacrosse it would really be that mobile learning is really all about learning. Um, it, you need to be sure to start there when determining your path include your educators, your parents, your students, your administration, um, but focus on that learning. And it's all about teaching and recognizes the changes that staff have that they bring to the classroom today, that their professional experience and their qualified teaching skills bring to that classroom so that you are building upon those and recognizing the change in your environment as um, some folks uh, retire and other teachers come in to what you're doing. And then, of course, in a mobile environment, it's all about technical readiness. And um, supporting your technical staff with that same culture of continuous learning that you support for your teachers, administrators, is very, very important. 
um, whether you're in a district with you know one sole person uh, that is uh, um, trying to provide all the technology support, um, administration and community needs to understand that um, there are things that we need to learn in the technical arena that make us um, able to support the, those changes in learning and those changes in teaching. So in lacrosse, uh, we're we're really happy to say that our um, initial one to one in grade six eight. Um, have really worked pretty well. Um, we are um, looking to make a, an additional um, change to that um, as we move ahead. So that's where we are in lacrosse. Great, Vicki. Really interesting points. Um, and I, I like the takeaways you kind of left for the audience. I also, um, we forget that need for patience, don't we? The patience and planning. Uh, can you share a little bit more with us? Um, you've had a comprehensive kind of plan for the implementation. Uh, can you give us some more detail on how you helped prepare your teachers really to know best practice and to become comfortable? Were there some things that were ahas to you in that process um, or some tips you could give to other people on the professional development needs and how to approach that with your teachers? I sure can. Um, having done uh, uh, implementations of technology over um, a number of years, um, the last 20 years, I have to say that this implementation of our one-to-one -one was one of the most um, encouraging things we've ever done, that I've ever had an opportunity to be a part of. And listening to our teachers and listening to um, them say, this is what we need first, second, and third, um, to make this work. So we started this um, um, journey by providing our teachers with the um, devices that they needed a number of years ago, um, portable devices they needed to start changing their practice and their productivity and their professional um, work. And at the same time, giving them enough um, support through staff development, through um, um, institutes such as our Blended Learning Institute, um, summer institute that we do each, each summer, um, as well as um, providing after-school um, workshops that are, are really focused on um, specific topics. Um, all of those things collectively um, worked, but in this particular case, um, we provided our teachers then iPads um, the May before we were going to roll this out and gave them an opportunity to come and get them, get a couple hours of training. And it was very interesting because they, um, all we needed to do was really show them um, the basics about how to function in this environment. But we focused um, totally on the environment of how do, you, how do you prepare and distribute content? And how do you develop that in such a way that you can differentiate uh, what you're trying to do in the classroom? and utilize that as the basis for teaching the tool. And that was one of the most um, transformational things we did from a staff development perspective. And um, it really changed everything. Then over the summer, um, we had teachers and um, our library media specialists develop um, courses of how to get started with um, technology in your classroom in a one-to-one. -one. And they put together um, uh, units that at the beginning of the school year when the students received their iPads, we handed them out to homeroom all the way across the entire uh, building. And so they were all ready to go. The students, they were, their accounts were ready, everything was ready to go. And each hour of the day, uh, the staff took one of those units um, out of an iTunes U course and taught um, certain skills to students. So all the teachers, all the students did everything at the same time all day long. And um, we, were, we were amazed at how quickly um, the students and the staff just took this and went with it. Um, our technical staff um, was at the, the sites. And we got there at 7 in the morning, and we're all nervous and wondering what's going to happen. And by 9.30, we were gone. The one-to-one -one just worked. And it was all that pre-planning and all that work together, as well as working directly with our staff and those, that, those teacher leaders that we worked with to make this happen. The transformation in our classrooms right now, you can walk in and see, quote unquote, flipped activities going on. You can see creativity happening. You can see collaboration happening among students. Um, you can see um, uh, teachers um, having people uh, turn things in electronically. It's just working. OK, 
Congratulations on all of your success there, Vicki. Very, very helpful information. And if you haven't already done so, done so, download the report and toolkit now and use the feedback form to let us know how you're using 